Hey everybody, Johnny here with Team Legit. Today I wanted to show you my Bixler FPV setup that I have and I'll get into details with the components. I'm going to be running the Bixler version 1.1. They made a lot of uh, upgrades from the previous version to make this one a lot better. There's still a few little tweaks that I would do uh, so I'll go ahead and show you those tips and tricks that I have and I'll get into the details of the components that I'll be using. So I've got here my Bixler uh, ARF model. Um, I got this from Hobby King, the USA warehouse. It was about 65, 70 bucks shipped uh, to the West Coast. I've got the two halves here. It comes as a as a uh, uh, split fuselage, so you can put your own components and things like that in there. As you can see, mine's pretty well uh, loaded, and it looks kind of cluttered. But I've actually done my best to keep it clean. So I'll go ahead and get into the mods that I've done to it. The first mod I did was this little um, screw guide. As you can see, there's two of them here. If you want to get the screws that hold the two wing halves together, only the front one will thread in its normal position. So if you wanted to use this to hold your wing halves together, then you're going to have to, the front one will hold, but if you want to use the back one, what I've done is I've actually cut out about a quarter of an inch below where the the little uh, the original guide used to be and I went ahead and made the same adjustment on the um, counterpart the other half so as you can see when I stick this screw into here the original guide would have stopped me right about here where it doesn't thread so what I done like I said is I moved it a quarter of an inch down where now I can actually thread into the uh, bottom half. That's what holds the two wings together. Another thing that I've done here is the motor mount. The motor mount usually sits all the way down here nice and flush, but what happens is it limits your prop size to a six inch prop. So in my case, I'm going to be running the stock motor and uh, uh, prop setup that they recommend. I've noticed it's got ample enough power it can you know climb it can climb pretty decently you're not going to get any insane um, tricks or vertical things like that but it's pretty fair uh, fair power system and it's pretty efficient I'm running a um, Hobby King 30 amp ESC with my watt meter I was able to test that this pulls about 19 amps which is pretty efficient for uh, uh, aircraft this big I'll be running a Genzace 2600 milliamp 3S 25C LiPo. So with this power setup and this battery pack here, uh, I'm looking to get about 15 to 20 minute flight time, about 35 to 40 miles per hour. I'll find out the final um, the final um, specs on the speed and efficiency once we get this thing in the air. So let's get into detail a little bit about what components I'm running. I'm running the Dragon OSD. I've had very, very good luck with this OSD and it's one of my favorite OSDs. Um, not only because it's very customizable, but it's also a good solid OSD. It does a lot of different features, whether you need them or not, they're there. I especially like the return to home and the uh, waypoints in the actual OSD. Um, I haven't really got a chance to mess with the waypoint and the waypoint editor, but I intend to do this on this aircraft. The way I've got mine set up on the pins here in the row, the first pin is an actual power pin. Uh, I don't like to run the power off of the current sensor. I'm going to be using a, th a separate 3S LiPo, probably a 450 milliamp uh, from ReadyMade RC. That should be enough to provide power to my Dragon OSD, my video camera, which is the PZ420 with the IR block. These are my favorite cameras, and I think they're the best cameras for the buck. Um, very, very simple, very, very easy to set up. I've got this set up with just my standard servo connectors, red for uh, 5 volts, black for ground, and white for the signal. That's all you need. I did go ahead into the settings using the OSD board and change the WDR to on, um, the wide dynamic ratio. I like that it can adjust from black to, uh, or from dark skies to colorful ground almost instantaneously. I don't like the lag on any of the other cameras, and especially when you're running a GoPro, that, uh, video out feature um, makes it a little bit more difficult to adjust from light to dark. 
So with that being said, I've got the red black, which is my, my 12 volts, tapped into the red and black of this video uh, out cable, which I'll get into the details of that in just one second. Also split into my BEC, that's going to be powering my Dragon Link, and from there powering my Dragon OSD and my FY20 stabilizer. So my 450 milliamp LiPo should be able to power all these devices for an ample amount of time. If I notice that it's uh, drawing quite a bit more amps, I'll just increase the milliamps on the, uh, the LiPo. So I've got my video going in from my camera. My video out, what I've done here is wired up just a standard servo uh, extension plug, the uh, male end or the female end, depending on uh, if we're talking about the pins or the actual connector. And the reason I do this is because when you're running a video transmitter, you can actually set it up to run off of the same plug. So just by plugging this and verifying that you do have 12 volts uh, for your video transmitter, just by plugging this in, now I'm running a uh, 1,000 500 milliwatt, 1.2 gigahertz uh, video TX, or I could just simply unplug it, set up a similar style wire, and run a different TX, a different frequency. This will allow our platform to swap out the different uh, frequencies I'll be running. The next pin I've got in here is my uh, current sensor. Pretty self-explanatory. After that is the RSSI. When you're plugging in the RSSI with the Dragon OSD to the Dragon Link, it's the simplest connection you can make. Now, the way I have mine set up, you'll see these extra wires here. Uh, th those are my options. Those are just optional, uh, my choice, and I'll talk about that in just one second. What this, the easiest way to set it up, you've got PPM on channel 12. So I've got my PPM signal going from my Dragon Link all the way into my Dragon OSD here on the uh, first pin and then I've got my white RSSI all I need is just this signal RSSI because I've got the ground from my uh, power supply which is coming in for my BEC I've already got my receiver grounded to the OSD so I just need to make sure let's see if I can get that zoomed in so I just need that one pin, this one wire to set my RSSI signal to the uh, Dragon OSD. Then from there I've got all my servos plugged in. I've got my uh, jumpers from my Dragon OSD. This is my aileron elevator and rudder going into the FY20. From there it goes to the actual individual servos. You'll notice that my throttle does not have the 5 volts. I'm not going to be running the BEC on the actual ESC. I'm going to be running a separate BEC. Uh, I just like to do that, just an extra fail safe. If my motor goes out, I could still con uh, control the aircraft and the system on board. So I just have the signal wire from the ESC and I left the 5 volt plug on a separate plug here in case I need to run a 5 volt transmitter. I could just borrow the power from the ESC. Although you'll need to put a ferret ring on there because you may get some noise from the ESC. You may or may not, it, it's depending. Then I've got down here on my Dragon OSD my GPS cable that goes right through all the way back here and I'll glue that onto the tail section of the plane. And then you'll notice this wire, this loose wire. Uh, this is just my communication terminal that I set up for, um, this is lightweight just to keep this in the plane because I don't want to run my USB cable inside the aircraft. This is my programming cable for the Dragon OSD. So I just made this little interface and I can just tap into it from there. So going back to the Dragon Link, again, all you'll need on the Dragon Link to run with the Dragon OSD is the signal, 5 volts, and ground. And now all your servos and your FY20 are powered off of that. Uh, in my case, I'm going to be running a 5 volt BEC. This single wire here is going from my Dragon uh, Link channel 6. This is my switch to control the different flight modes of the FY20. Just a note, I've got my uh, Dragon Link antenna tucked away nice and neat, and I'll mount this on the vertical stabilizer of the, uh, of the aircraft. Um, polarity sensitive, I don't know if you can see here, but inside of the glued up 
ends of the Dragon Link receiver, there is a fine wire and there is a coarse wire. The fine wire in there, this is your, what I would say, uh, positive, if that makes any sense. This wire needs to be facing vertically up for the best range. So you would mount this wire here facing up. Then the kind of more solid one, the, the coarse one, I guess would be your ground. And that kind of makes sense because you would point it towards the ground. So when I get this thing all ready to, to glue in here, what I would do is mount it like so. So this wire is pointing straight up and down, and this wire is pointing down uh, towards the ground. I left the end loose, which you can leave the whole thing loose, but I just like to clear it from all my control rods. So again, um, this is my Bixler project with the Dragon OSD running a Dragon Link for control and FY20 for stabilizer. I'll get this thing all cleaned up, get all the wires tucked in nice and neat, put the two halves together, and show you guys uh, a little bit of the performance and what this system can do.